Hi there, Professor Juris here, and I wanted to make you a quick video and show you the way to develop your cyanotype print. So to start with, um, I left the print um, that's been exposed already, and this was exposed under a um, printing unit light that I have, but um, it could have been exposed out in the sun, it could have been exposed anywhere, but you're, you're in a room, you need to be in a room that doesn't have any ultraviolet light source. So what I have is I just have a regular incandescent light bulb, um, just like this one, that's been um, in a um, clamp-on painting light, and I just have that hanging from my ceiling. So that's the only light uh, in this room. Now, you, you want to be careful. Sometimes you can get away with a, a light bulb like this, a fluorescent bulb, but some of these do have kind of a lot of um, ultraviolet light source, and you might even use one of these to try exposing your prints, depending on the one that you get. Um, would have more ultraviolet than others. If you got a pretty powerful one, it could actually use it to expose, expose your prints too. So once I have the print in this contact printing frame um, and it's been exposed, then what I'm gonna do is take it out of the contact printing frame. So I'll do that right now. And this is one of the other things that I talked about, and I might've showed you this in another video, but um, you can lift it up and you can see how dark this is um, in here. So you actually want to be able to see the image there. And I'm going to open this side. And now I'll take my piece of paper out that has the image on it. And um, there's the negative there. So I'm going to move this over here out of the way. And I like to develop these this way rather than sticking them under running water. I like to just put it in a tray like this. And then what I will do is actually pour water on top of it. So I'm just going to pour this water right on top of it. And then we can see the print um, begin to expose. And the reason I don't like to develop these by sticking them under a faucet or running water, you can do it that way. But if you ever get like a little splash on the print, it actually will leave a, a watermark there. So it's, it's kind of weird because you're going to wash it all off anyway. But if a splash hits the print, it'll leave a mark and actually ruin the print. So once I've you know, done this like this and um, rinsed it. I'm going to pour this, I'm just pouring this into a bucket now because this is a dry sink. It's not hooked up to a drain. Um, and then what I will do is actually give it another water bath. And you can see there's still some more blue coming off and I have a little bit more water here. And I'm just going to, you know, agitate this for a little bit. And now what I will do is I'll actually transfer this to my um, wash bath. So uh, let's transfer this to the wash bath and then you can take a look at it there. Okay, this print has been washing for about eight minutes now uh, in the wash that I have set up now. Sometimes you can come across a um, really nice print washer like the ones that we have in school, like a Gravity Works or something, um, at a used like a Goodwill store or something. So always keep your eyes out for those when you're out thrifting. But um, I wanted to show you this wash right here and you could probably find one of these on eBay. Um, but this is called a uh, Kodak Tray Siphon, and it's a real unique device for washing prints at home. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can simply just keep filling the tray and dumping it. But the way that this works is it actually puts shoots water across the print, and then it drains um, water back here, and the water comes out down down below there. And these things are, are really nice. They don't make them anymore, but it's a you know incredible thing if you find one. So they're they're out there if you look for them. I think probably the easiest place to find them might be on eBay. So this print has been washing for eight minutes. So what I'm going to do is shut this off right now for a second. And I'm going to take the tray washer off of there and give you a better look at it too. So that's the way that that looks like. And what I'm going to do now is um, actually pour this water out that's in here. And now what I have in a uh, beaker is I have a, a developer and oxidizing agent mixed up that is um, one part hydrogen peroxide to nine parts water. So I have 
uh, 900 mils of water in here and 100 mils of hydrogen peroxide. And I want you to watch what happens to this print when I pour this on there. This is an optional step, but it will actually darken the print up. If you can see that happening right in front of your eyes. And it actually just oxidizes the, the whole print. Um, and this, you don't want to leave this on there long, but um, you know, it's already done pretty much. So now you can actually pour this um, back into the container if you wanted to keep reusing it. Um, this is the only print I'm making right now, so I'm not going to save it. But um, so I will simply, you know, rock it for a little bit, about a minute there. And then I got to go back and I'm going to give this about another eight minute wash. Now, um, depending upon the paper that you're using, again, I'm using the, um, the platinum, special platinum paper. And when I'm using that paper, it's a little bit thicker. And if you're using something like Reeves BFK or Arches or, or some paper like that, then those papers do require like an eight to 12 minute wash. But if you're using the Cranes Crest paper, um, the Cranes Crest paper is very thin as you'll find out. And it really doesn't need to wash that long. You know, two to three minutes and they're usually washed very clean. And what you're looking for when you're washing this print is you want to make sure that all the yellow chemistry is washed out of the print. So this, this print looks maybe just a little bit light. I'm going to let it dry to see how it dries out. And when I dry it, what I'm simply going to do is roll out some paper towels. I'll set the print down on top of paper towels and then I'll actually roll a few paper towels over the top of it and just blot it off. Uh, you could use blotting paper for that too if you have blotter, blotter paper, but um, I just use paper towels for these cyanotypes and they, they work out really good. So I'm just going to let that go about eight minutes and then blot it off and, um, and let it dry and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, thank you. Hi there, Professor Juris here and I just wanted to make you a video about evaluating your final cyanotype print um, and prints. So what I've done is I've kept the copies I've made along the way in order to get the um, exact print that I wanted. So I'm going to show you these. And of course, looking at this one here, it's very light. It's too light. It's washed out. Um, but the reason that I'm showing you this and this evaluation process that you'll go through every time that you make a print um, is because I've had students try to turn in prints like this before and they'll tell me, well, that's the way it came out. Or they might say, that's the way I wanted it. Well, when the, if you say that's the way I wanted it, then I'm going to go back to a quote by Arnold Gasson in his Handbook of Contemporary Photography that he states, there's always the esoteric dreamer that insists on the silvery splotches being in his prints on purpose. So this is not a good print. So if you have a print like this, you have to think about what do I need to do to make it you know, darker? It's too light. And it's the same way as like photographic paper, it works the same way. So if this is um, too light, the next thing I might do is like double the time or go a little bit longer. So the next print I made, I went for 45 minutes. This first one I made for 15 minutes and then I thought that was way too light. So then I made another one for 45 minutes. And after 45 minutes and after washing it and drying it and everything, um, I evaluated it and I said, well, that's still a little bit too light. I want it to be a little bit darker. So then what I did is I added 30 more minutes and I went up to um, 75 minutes. And so this was 75 minutes in my exposure unit in order to come out with this print. Um, so if you think about the time, you could say, you know, this 45 minute one, by the time it's washed and dried and everything, that was an hour. Um, this was more than an hour to get this print. This is, you know, an hour and a half once it's been, um, you know, washed and dried and everything. So you have, a, you have a time process here where this takes a lot of time to do these prints, but you have to put the time in if you want a good print. Now look at this print, this print is gorgeous. Um, it's, it's much nicer, you know, than the other ones. And this is what you're looking for. So for your final prints, you just, you know, have to take your time and you need to make notes along the way. And I like to write right on the piece of paper, as you can see here, that, um, I know how long this print was made. So then if I ever go back and print this negative, um, and I'm using the same light source, then I can pretty much, you know, bargain with that time. That that's the time that it'll take to make the print. So I hope this helps you when you start to evaluate, you start to make prints and 
Um, another important thing is don't try to do a bunch of prints at one time. You know, stick with one print until you get it right. I've seen students try to coat like 10 sheets of paper and just bomb these things out. And they always come out like garbage. The, the stuff is, you know, they throw it in the garbage. But, you know, this is a really nice print. I'm actually going to map this print up for myself and hang it on, hang it on the wall to remember Maya. So I um, hope that helps. If it helps and you like this uh, video, hit the thumbs up on the channel and then smash the subscribe button. And we'll see you with the next one.